If the proposed assistance measure is approved, millions of Canadians, especially seniors and low-income individuals, might get $1,975 checks in their mailboxes, alleviating some of the strain on their finances caused by rising living costs. People all around the nation, particularly those who depend on CPP, OAS, and other types of aid to get by in these tough economic times, are hoping and talking about the possibility of this substantial financial support being introduced has never been more important given the extraordinary economic challenges that Canadians are still facing. A lot of people are finding it harder and harder to keep up with their quality of living because of inflation, which has an impact on all parts of everyday life, including grocery expenditures and housing costs. The economic challenges have hit seniors living on fixed incomes through programs like CPP and OIS especially hard. The rising cost of living has made it difficult for their regular benefit payments to keep up. Many retirees who had planned their retirement based on past economic conditions are now in even more difficult financial situations making this. For CPP users, the proposed $1,975 payout may be a lifeline with this extra money. They could feel much more secure financially. For millions of Canadians, the Canada Pension Plan is a lifeline in retirement. However, many also discover that, with expenses going up, their pension benefits aren't enough to keep up with their ideal level of living. Without changing regular payment amounts or eligibility, the proposed $1,975 payment would enhance existing CPP benefits, offering considerably. Was required a financial buffer zone for beneficiaries' health care expenditures not covered by provincial health plans and rising power prices are only two examples of the many growing pressures that this additional support could alleviate. As the biggest pension program in Canada, old age security is a vital population that might gain greatly from this planned assistance payment, which would help with transportation expenses and necessary house repairs. Give seniors 65 and up a guaranteed basic income, yet many of them still have trouble paying for basic necessities. An additional $1,975 payment could have a significant impact on these individuals, especially those who depend on OAs for a majority of their income. This support would be especially helpful for seniors who receive the Guaranteed Income Supplement as it would help cover essential expenses when other programs or supplements aren't available. This proposed payment's inclusion of low-income families and people who may not be receiving CPP or OS payments is arguably its most noteworthy feature. Financial hardship affects Canadians of all ages and conditions, not just seniors, and this broader breadth reflects that. In order to make sure that assistance reaches people who really need it, the possible eligibility requirements would probably take things like yearly income threat thresholds, family size and composition, and geographic location under account. Financial vulnerability affects people of all ages, backgrounds, and socioeconomic statuses, and our inclusive approach acknowledges that. In addition to helping those with lower incomes and seniors, a $1,975 support payment would have far-reaching economic consequences because when given extra money, people tend to spend it locally, which is good for small businesses and the economy as a whole. In addition to reducing the recipient's mental and emotional burden, the payment could stimulate local economies, which in turn would benefit the broader community. This, in turn, could lead to improved health outcomes and reduced health care costs, as well as the direct recipients. The government must build effective processes for determining who is qualified to receive payments and how those funds are distributed, all while preventing fraud and abuse in order for this program to be successfully implemented. Would necessitate meticulous planning to guarantee the prompt distribution of assistance to individuals in greatest need, taking into account not only administrative infrastructure but also verification procedures to guarantee that all qualified individuals may have the assistance they require within the allocated budget, it is crucial to have open lines of contact and to offer several ways for applications. The government would have to make a substantial financial commitment to this assistance payment program, which could mean reallocating current resources. Discovering possible new revenue mechanisms or possible cost sharing between the federal government and provinces measures that would ensure the program's longevity. This payment could serve as a vital source of support for senior singles living alone, allowing them to maintain their dignity and quality of life. It is important to carefully evaluate the program taking into account both current needs and future fiscal implications to make sure it can be effectively maintained over time. Senior couples may also benefit from this additional aid that is useful for keeping up their shared home and taking care of medical expenses that other programs might not pay for this payment could help low-income families with basic expenses like food, housing, and children's bills. It could also be very helpful for people with disabilities who need specialized care or equipment. The relationship between this planned payment and current funding 
Initiatives should be thoroughly evaluated to guarantee that beneficiaries reap the benefits while avoiding unforeseen outcomes. Be sure to consider the payment's tax implications, how it might influence your eligibility for other income-tested programs, and how this support programs at the provincial level may be influenced or supplemented by federal initiatives. For receivers to comprehend these exchanges and make educated fiscal choices, transparent standards must be put in place. There may be further social ramifications for communities across Canada as a result of this proposed payment beyond just individual cash assistance. Some families and individuals could be able to escape poverty with the support of the immediate financial relief and with the greater financial resources, they could be able to keep their living arrangements stable. Back smaller regional companies improving physical and mental health as a result of financial stress may lessen the strain on social and healthcare systems. In order to make sure this program works in the long run, we need to think about things like how it will handle economic downturns and social demands, how it will fit into larger plans to reform social security and pensions, and how we can assess the program's sustainability. It is crucial to regularly review and adjust the program to make sure it's still meeting its goals. The application process for this support payment should be straightforward and easy to use. Many applicants would prefer to apply online, but those who need help with the process can also get it over the phone or in person at Service Canada locations. Other options could be considered as well. Individuals currently receiving specific benefits are automatically enrolled saving time and effort for numerous qualified beneficiaries. The success of the program would depend on when it is implemented. Considering the practical aspects of building the required administrative systems and processes alongside the urgent requirements of potential recipients, it would be vital to determine when and how quickly the program could be launched. It is important to clarify for recipients what they can anticipate in the event that this is a one-time payment or if there is the possibility of ongoing support. To qualify for this plan reimbursement, it would be wise for them to take the time to gather the required paperwork and figure out how this assistance could influence their finances in general. The following various regions of Canada would likely feel the effects of this proposed payment in different ways, so it's important to gather relevant financial records, review current benefits, and think about how to best use the payment if received. Recipients may also need access to financial planning resources and advice. Reflecting the varied cost of living and economic circumstances across the nation, the payment might be especially useful for rural users to tackle high housing prices, while urban inhabitants could use it to address other pressing issues, Healthcare service accessibility or transportation costs to guarantee equitable support across all areas, the program's design and implementation would have to take regional variants into account. Eligible persons could benefit greatly from the assistance that community organizations and social service providers could offer with the application processes and the support payment itself. Advice, direction, and assistance in order to reach seniors who live alone, it is very important to make sure that vulnerable groups know about and have access to this help. People who encounter linguistic or cultural obstacles have limited access to technology or lack the necessary abilities, it is becoming more apparent that many Canadians are struggling financially due to continued economic difficulties and rising living costs. As a result, there is a growing proposal to introduce a $1,975 assistance payment. VED was developed and discussed. It is a significant step toward meeting the needs of vulnerable populations and guaranteeing that all Canadians can afford to live decently. The program's success will depend on its well-thought-out design, its effective execution, and its continuous evaluation. It is crucial to prioritize accessible application processes, clear communication, and consideration of varied requirements and circumstances. Aspects of the program's framework as talks progress, everyone's input is vital for creating a program that helps the people who need it most, especially the elderly and those with limited financial resources, and that can be efficiently and sustainably implemented with the potential to offer much needed financial relief and assist in sustaining quality of life during these difficult economic times, this support might have far-reaching positive consequences on both communities and the economy as a whole. Beyond the contributions of individual awardees to a stronger, supporting vulnerable Canadians when they need it most, the proposed $1,975 support payment represents a significant potential initiative in Canada's ongoing efforts to ensure financial security for its citizens. Moving forward, it is essential to continue paying attention to both immediate needs and long-term sustainability in order to create a program that truly serves its intended purpose. Issues that need to be rectified as we delve deeper into the details, our focus should be on developing a program that can effectively and sustainably support vulnerable populations and address economic inequalities. 
This will ensure that Canadian society as a whole benefits from the program and that individuals in need receive the support they need.